it's a banger we have on our hands. Gukesh makes his way to the playing hall at the second round of the candidates 2024. He has the black pieces against his city mate Pragnananda. They both stay just one kilometer apart from each other. So they could very well have played this game in their city itself. But of course, they both made it to the candidates. The two youngest participants, Gukesh has arrived early. Prag will join in soon. Gukesh is just 17 years old while Prag is 18. It feels to me that Gukesh has a slight upper hand when playing against Prag. At Vaikanze, he was completely winning, but Prag managed to claim a threefold repetition. In Prague, it was actually Prague who was winning. But then Gukesh managed to hold a draw in that amazing rook endgame. But in general, in classical chess, Gukesh has had a slight upper hand. What will happen today remains to be seen. Prague has the white pieces. You can see Gukesh adjusting all his pieces in his inimitable style. Uh, this is how he, he does it always calmly. He tries to actually, you know... Uh, he holds a piece and holds it on that position for a while as if giving them the strength saying that today you have to fight and all of Gukesh's pieces on the board always have to fight. There's never a game where Gukesh sat settles for an early draw and there you have Pragnananda making his way with a banana and a lint chocolate. This is how Prag uh, likes it. Uh, it's a dark chocolate, by the way. You you know that these players are very careful about their sugar intake because it spikes the energy very quickly, but then also brings it down very quickly. So dark chocolate generally keeps a sustained amount of energy. And there's all uh, deep study about all these things that these players do. Well, the games are about to begin. Pragnananda adjusts all his pieces with white he will be looking to strike here he's been working here with peter swidler as has been revealed while gukesh has been working with gaevsky for now quite some time both of them drew their first round so this is actually a very important clash and as the organizers have made it clear the indian players have to play against each other in the initial rounds and this is that's why they are being paired against each other in round number two and a shake of hands and off we go now what is Prague's first move going to be Prague generally takes his time before starting off the game he likes to uh, think a bit and he opens the game with one d4 it's always difficult to guess what Prague's first move would be because he can equally play e4 and d4 both Gukesh responds back with d5, super solid, c4. It's amazing how different openings sort of connect generations. I can very well imagine Capablanca and Botwinik playing the Queen's Gambit declined um, more than 100 years ago. And now we have Gukesh and Prague playing here. e6 played. Yes, this is the Queen's Gambit declined. And Prague now has an option to respond with knight c3 or knight f3. Both have their pros and cons. Prague goes knight to f3. And a normal move here is to get your knight out as well to f6 and get moving. Yes, Gukesh brings his knight out as well. Knight comes to f6. Both players have two hours on the clock without any increment to reach 40 moves and after move 40 they have 30 second increment and Prag goes for g3 the catalan he doesn't play this opening so often but today he wants to try it out a check and now the main move by far is here so let's say if there are 100 percent games that have reached this position then 90 percent of the games go bishop d2 but Prag goes knight c3 and this must come as a small surprise to Gukesh because this is not very common the knight coming there. Gukesh now quickly chops off the pawn on c4 and tells Prag how are you going to regain it because queen a4 check is met with knight c6. Prag says I'm not interested in regaining it for the moment I'll just continue with my development. He plays bishop to g2. Black castles it out here. And now, very likely that white will also castle it out. This is actually a pure pawn sacrifice 
variation that has been played here. Uh, in fact, this is somewhat like how Dubo plays uh, in the Catalan. He always gives up the pawn on c4 and then tries to capture the center. Knight comes out, puts pressure here. Uh, for now, the d4 pawn is well covered. You can't really play e4. You would love to, but then there is bishop takes, pawn takes, and you lose this pawn. That's the reason why Prague asks a question to Gukesh. If he goes back, then white can play e4. But if he takes, takes... White has the bishop pair then. Well, Gukesh says, I'm not interested to give up my bishop. And he goes back to e7. Does that mean that Prague can now expand in the center? Yes, he does. e4 is on the board. Now, the engines do not like this, this position so much for White. But Prague has made a practical decision. And I think it's a very, very interesting one. Because Gukesh loves such complex positions. And Prague is going into them. Uh, which is interesting because Prague could also go into some technical positions which are his strength. But he's taking on Gukesh uh, in the phase of the game where Gukesh is strong. Bishop e3 played and now Gukesh cements his c4 pawn. He's a pawn up. He's a clear pawn up. But look at White's development. Beautiful. Meanwhile, black hasn't developed his bishop yet and Prague moves his queen to e2. It's a very subtle move. The idea is to bring the rook to the center and then break in the center. Bishop comes out to b7 on the long diagonal here. And now the rook will most likely... Yes, rook comes into the center of the board and you want to break through with d5. The game heats up now. Where does this knight go? Very cool move by... Gukesh making use of this slightly weakened b3 square as an outpost. The knight can be misplaced there, but it can also be pretty strong. Prague is blitzing out his moves. He pushes his pawn to d5. And this is a bit scary because on one hand, he's well prepared. He's blitzing out while Gukesh is thinking, you know, he's close to an hour down on the clock, slowly moving there. Pawn takes pawn taken. And yes, if you take back with the pawn, Black would be very happy to blockade it with bishop d6. But Prague's idea is to push forward. He's pushed it forward. And now this knight cannot go to g4 maybe because bishop f4. And then I kick your knight away. So he has to go a little bit passive with knight e8. And Gukesh is now two pawns up, not just one pawn up. Prague goes e6 and he's giving up another pawn it seems. If you take f e6, then you are three pawns up actually. Knight d4 is what Prague may want to do. Gukesh this time thinks hard and plays f5. And now I think he has brought Prague out of theory. So Prague is started to think. And this is not great news for Gukesh because he didn't play the best move. Otherwise, Prague would have been prepared. Knight e5 played. The idea is to go knight d7 to trap the rook on f8. And so Gukesh brings his knight to f6, controlling that square. Now, d5 is weak, but for the time being, it's protected. e6 pawn is weak, but also a strength. We'll have to wait and watch. Queen c2, I really like this move by Prague, because if g6 to support f5, bishop h6 and the dark square start to get weak. Uh, the engine likes to give up an exchange, but Gukesh says, I'll play c6. And what he does, is he gives up this pawn, but bolsters this some kind of a diamond-like structure on the queen side. Um, I think Prague happily goes in and chops off the f5 pawn. Interesting moment of the game now. What will Gukesh do is the question. He has to think about his knight. His bishop is, a, is slightly awkward there. The pawn on e6 is gaining momentum, but the f file has opened up. He goes queen e8, and I like this move overall. It controls c6 so that later the bishop can move. Queen may pop out here on h5 if needed and also comes out of this pin here. Knight f7 played by Prague. That knight is slightly weirdly positioned there. But I think the main point is, of course, to keep the knight hanging around here. There could be some checks. d6 square is controlled. How does Gukesh continue? He goes bishop c8 and he tells Prague this is... A weak pawn here. By the way, Gukesh could have also sacrificed an exchange and gone here, which was pretty good compensation. But bishop c8 played. And Prague brings his last piece into the game. Rook f to e1. 
I feel that a sack on d5 is imminent. Like somehow you sack a rook, a knight, a bishop. I don't know. What do you sack? He goes knight b7. And I think the idea for Gukesh is to put his knight on d6. That is what he wants to do. Uh, Prague goes bishop g5. Logical. Because what Prague wants to do, he wants to take, take, and then take, take, and just open up the entire center where black pieces are completely undeveloped. That is what he wants to do. He wants to just blast open that center. Rook a7. What a move by Gukesh. This rook is going to be useful on the 7th rank. How does he even come up with such ideas? Insane move. Rook a7. Prague says, well, I'm not impressed. I'm taking on f6 twice. And I think it's now time for him to sack on d5. Maybe with the bishop more more. Uh, accurate because then you can get your knight to d5. Yes, he takes it. Whoa. Wow. Now bishop takes c3 is possible. But he first takes in the center, cd5. I think it's time for the knight to jump in. Prague's sacrifice has been very good. Takes. And now Gukesh has to worry about this. Also, his rook can get be hanging in certain lines. You can see there Gukesh trying to focus both the players, giving it their all. Bishop e7. Now, knight at 6 check is an amazing move. If you take, I give a check. If king here, check and you lose the rook. But look at this line. If you go bishop g5, h4, knight c5, take and rook swings in. That is why rook a7 was such a brilliant move. Prag goes queen g4 and this is a mistake. It gives Gukesh a chance to come back and knight d8. Fantastic move played by Gukesh. Because now if knight h6 played by Prag, king h8 is completely fine. And with time running low for Pragnananda, he takes on d8. He takes it, but it seems like this is not going to help Prag's chances because he's a piece down. Gukesh is simplifying. He's deciding what to take with taking with the queen is risky because the rook is opposite here. He takes with the bishop. There is no e7 because the queen is hanging and Prague instantly responds with queen d4 attacking the rook on a7. Where will the rook move? Well, Gukesh says, I'm not impressed, Prague. I'm going here. Prague moves the rook up. Rook e4. What is his idea? Where does he want to go? Maybe to g4 to attack g7 and threaten some attacks there. No, bishop f6 played by Gukesh. I think he understands that he's completely in control here because of this two-hour rule with no increment players. Of course, under tremendous stress not to lose on time. Prague now, he plays his queen to e3. He moves his queen back, but Gukesh has many, many moves at his disposal. He just comes back and blocks this pawn. This is a fantastic move. Now, all that he has to do is activate the bishop, then the queen, h4 played by Prague. You can see his pieces are all beautifully active, but one of them is missing. He's a piece down and Gukesh is activating himself. Queen c6 played and this rook is proving to be such a valuable asset on the 7th rank defending the bishop. Prague pushes his pawn even further. h5, but now Gukesh, you can see how he just tries to focus and finds the best move. Bishop c5 attacking the queen. Queen moves, f2 is hanging. And now the queen has to go away. Where does it go? He goes queen g5. Now isn't f2 hanging? Even e6 is hanging. Many, many pawns and pieces are hanging here. It's just that Gukesh has to be careful about the time pressure here. Both players very low on time. Bishop takes e6 played. Gukesh says to Prague, I don't see any tactics coming up here. I don't see how you're going to take advantage of the fact that my pieces are a bit hanging. Uh, your knight is being attacked. What are you going to do? Well, h6 played by Prague, but this rook, what a rook. It's not letting Prague do anything there. h6, and now Gukesh can chop off the f2 pawn with his bishop, with his rook. Anything is fine. You can see Pragnananda knows the writing is on the wall. Meanwhile, Gukesh... I love how he's so focused and calm in winning position. Something for all of us to learn from when we are winning, not to relax, not to relax there because that is when your opponent is at the most dangerous phase in the game. And Gukesh has spotted the move. He wants to make it, but finally checking, you know, not to make any blunders because this might be 
a very very critical moment in the game he takes on f2 he takes rook takes f2 a fantastic move there and now uh, there's no way to save this game the rook will move check queen will hang pragnananda is checking if there are any final defenses in the position but there seem to be none gukesh has managed to outwit his city mate prag and maybe king h1 just move the king away but then i bring rook f5 and prag resigns gukesh scores the win and takes the lead a joint lead in the tournament with one and half out of two and uh, gukesh speaking with the arbiter there uh, not so sure what they are talking about but a uh, uh, extremely complex game but it turned out that gukesh handled the complications better the clock better prag had the right approach and fighting spirit but somehow gukesh managed to outwit him you can see both the players writing down their moves because i think in the last 5 minutes you are allowed not to write uh, here because there's no increment so they have written down the moves which they had missed uh, there and now both of them sign their score sheets well for prag it's a disappointing result generally he likes to analyze after the game with his opponent but today uh, he's not maybe uh, it's just that he is not happy with his play uh, the way in which he played there were definite chances for him his uh, choice was also very brave but then gukesh once again showing why he is one of the best players in the world right now adjusting and arranging all the pieces and his customary respect to the chessboard takes his copy of the score sheet and he leaves the premises